Hi boys and girls, Ken Smith, Ken Smith Fishing. So this is going to do something a little different this week. So this is, uh, we fished a tournament this past weekend, a team tournament on Raver, and it's, it's a different tournament format. So it's two elimination tournaments on Saturday, a morning tournament, an afternoon tournament, a little over four hours each, and then a finals on Sunday. And I hadn't been on the lake in several weeks. I, uh, I got two days of practice, Thursday and Friday. My team partner, Dickie Newberry, just had his knee replaced, so Dickie really couldn't practice. So I want to take you through my practice and kind of what I was thinking as I went into this tournament and then the progression of my practice and what I saw and what I was thinking about. So I thought you guys might be, enjoy that. So um, let's just kind of jump right in. So the lake is about four feet low. The water temperature had fallen from about 70, 71 degrees when I was there three or four weeks ago, all the way down into the mid to low 50s. So the water cooled off a bunch. The lake had been extremely low. It came up a little bit and it started back down and it was starting to creep back up. The lake was, when I looked before practice, it was 159.99. So it was just over 4.2 feet low. And so when I left on Thursday morning, I had on the front deck uh, three or four rattle traps, three quakes, two swanks, uh, and an A-Rig, a Provoke Jerkbake, and a Vision 110 Jerkbake, and a Chatterbait. And I really wanted to catch him on an A-Rig. We won this tournament two years ago throwing an A-Rig. And so I went out, started out throwing an A-Rig, and here's kind of what I found. I don't know what exactly is for breakfast. Whatever it is must be delicious. They have worked their way all the way up that bank, moving really quick. shooting that freehand, so I apologize if it's a little shaky, but that little group of guys and girls is working. Not much size to them, right in the middle of the drain. Third fish that's bit that going through there. They're slapping at it. They're not eating it. That one ate it. Quality keeper. That's all it is. better fish. I don't think he's a giant. He stopped it and went immediately down to the grass. So, oh, I snagged him. I snagged him. I can see fish on the live scope. Sort of rooting around under it down here. I was really creeping that bait when that fish Probably ran up there and swiped at it. 
So I suspect y'all are starting to notice the theme. Same theme I noticed. Lots of small fish. And I could get bit, I'm not going to say real regularly on the A-Rig, but I was getting bit every 20 or 30 minutes. And they were 13 to 14 and a half inch fish. But you can't cover water real fast with an A-Rig. You just can't move it very fast. And so much of the grass is so shallow. So normally this time of year, you're going to find 8 to 14 or 15 foot deep water. Right now, it's four to, I think the deepest grass I saw was maybe nine feet, but most of it's six to seven feet. And a lot of it's clumpy grass, and you can't really throw an A-rig around that. So uh, the first thing I picked up was a, uh, was a quake, and then I picked up a, well, a, a quake. And, and the problem is all the six cents baits are five eighths ounces or bigger. And I just could not, you've got to work that bait so fast, it's not effective to work in that super shallow grass. Now, I had a quarter ounce trap, but I really don't like throwing a quarter ounce trap. I would prefer throwing a half ounce trap, mainly because of the hook sizes. You've got to get, you got to get such a small hook on those quarters. So what I do, which is what I did here, was I dug a rod out that had 20 pound fluorocarbon. So that that bigger diameter line helps you keep that bait up in the water column. So I got out a rod and reel. Uh, it's a, it's, and I'm going to talk more about this rod in the future. I think I finally found kind of my ultimate loose rattle trap rod. And I'll tell you all about that later because I'm still playing around with a couple of them. But so I, I picked up a half ounce rattle trap. Uh, and the Yozuri, the 5 8 ounce Yozuri, is the same problem you got with the Quake right now. It's just a little bit too heavy. When the water comes up, it'll be perfect. But right now, I went to the rattle trap. It runs a little bit shallower. I can put bigger hooks on that half ounce, 20 pound fluorocarbon line of Cigar Invisex, and then a 7 1 to 1 reel. Because I don't want to have to be just cooking it, although I want to keep it up and keep it moving. So you're going to see I'm throwing that trap and I've got that rod tip up. So I Sorry guys, my phone rang. I know it was really loud, so I'm cutting this off a little short. So I've got that, I'm using a 7.6 rod, a big long rod, a fast reel, so I don't just have to kill my wrist and my hands keeping it up on top of the grass. And I'm just trying to work it around the over the top of the grass and around those clumps. And what I'm looking for are little points and those little clumps out by themselves to try to find those fish now much shallower. What you have to remember at Rayburn and Toledo and most of the Texas lakes is, these fish have significant Florida strain in them now. They got a lot of Florida genetics, and those Florida fish want to feed shallow. So, yes, the water's really cold. Those fish don't care. Some of the best rattle trap fishing I've ever experienced was in 47 degree water temperature. You got to remember, they spawn in 62 degrees, so they're really comfortable in that cooler water here in Texas. So, what I did is I picked up a trap, and you're going to see my progression now. So I went from an A-rig out off the edge of the grass to a trap a little bit shallower, and then I'm going to go a little bit shallower still. So let's go back to the fishing.
fish has rolled every single direction trying to get rid of that chatterbait. It doesn't have a very sharp hook on it. I lost that fish a minute ago. Saturday morning, five of those Saturday afternoon. We'll get you in the winter's bracket Sunday. Nice fish. Cool. Five pounder. So let's stop right there, partly because I'm pretty tired, partly because I got a lot of footage. I'm gonna break this up and do three parts like I did last week. So we'll do a part to it today, a part tomorrow, and a part. I guess that'll be Friday. Uh, I know a lot of you guys are coming to the lake to fish the Keith, Keith Combs and the Bass Cat Owners Tournament, so I'll have all this up for you this week. But that's my progression, a little bit shallower every day, and you're going to see we, 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 I find a group of fish, and, and we got a little bit lucky, and I'll talk about how we got lucky too. So thanks for tuning in. Please subscribe if you don't. Mash that subscribe button. Click the bell. It'll give you notifications every time I post a new video so you see them quick. And I really appreciate you guys' support. Uh, on all of my sponsors, whether it's Waterland Optics or Six Cents or Tackle Warehouse using the codes below. Uh, that helps pay my bills so that I can do these videos for you guys. And I got more boat reviews coming up as well. So thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys tomorrow.